I'm doing a presentation next week at Alibaba. And a bunch of people have said to me, why Alibaba? Alibaba has stolen my product. They're selling my product. And the truth is Alibaba is not selling your product. They're not, they have not stolen your product. Alibaba is a platform. It's a platform for suppliers and factories to advertise on. Like Amazon is a platform for third-party sellers to advertise on, to sell their stuff. In fact, Amazon does create products. Alibaba does not create products. So who is out there stealing your product and selling it? Well, there's a lot of bad actors, and I can give you a list of them. Number one, your own factory is selling that product. And maybe they have every right to. Maybe it's their product. And you chose it, and you found it, and you decided, yes, this is the product I want to sell. I'm going to put my logo on it. And then someone else is selling the same thing with their logo. In that case, no, they haven't stolen your product. You don't have any rights to it because they're selling it to other people too, just like they sold it to you. But let's forget about that. Let's assume you do have a unique product you've developed on your own. So yeah, sometimes it's your own factory that's selling it. Sometimes it's your own supplier. Maybe it's a trading company. You didn't know they were a trading company. Or worse, it's a trading company. You did not know they were a trading company. You still had agreements with them, but because they are a trading company, those agreements don't go upstream. So the factory that's creating it doesn't realize there's any protections. It could be um, other bad actors, such as um, your sourcing agent. And there are some very good sourcing agents, but there are also some real shits. There are some sourcing agents that actually get paid by gurus to tell them what products are selling well. It could be other factories that discovered you on their own or discovered your products on their own. It could be Amazon sellers who discovered you through Helium 10 and other research tools and then ask factories to reverse engineer or copy your product. Or it could be Amazon sellers who track down your factory using Pangeva or Import Genius or, or other tools like that. So what can you do? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Number one, use an NNN. That stands for non-disclosed, non-use, or non-compete, and non-circumvent. An NDA is not enough in China. It must be an NNN. It should be signed by their company seal, not just a signature. Make it in Chinese. Technically, it's not required, but they take it more seriously. And do they take these seriously? Yes. It's a communist country. They do not want to be the nail that stands up above every other as it gets hit down. In fact, not only do they not want to be that, but their attorneys do not want to be the attorneys that represent them. So they do take it seriously. There Again, there are some that will push it beyond what's, what's expected, but usually that happens because you've used um, a uh, a cheap boilerplate NNN that someone's selling on Fiverr or selling it to you and it really doesn't even have your own product listed in that. Um, next is decoy sourcing. This is something I've been doing for 10 plus years now. And it's starting to catch steam. People are starting to understand it and do it. So for example, let's say that I am going to produce this little duck and I don't want to tell them I'm doing a duck. I'll tell them I'm doing a panda. And I can use that to get my sense of quality, cost, et cetera. But I'm not giving away the secret sauce. I'm not telling them I'm actually doing a duck. I'm telling them it's a panda. And therefore, my new unique duck, assume this is unique. Um, I've saved that. Nobody knows what's happening. Use factory agreements. And there are standard ones, like a general conditions agreement. You should always have Healthy negotiations. That means that you and the factory are all making money. Don't be a dick. Imprint your trademark on the product. If it's plastic, get it imprinted on the plastic. You have to say made in China, so you might as well say made in China exclusively for so-and-so, your trademark. And in order for that to work, you need to always register your trademark in China as well as the U.S., Oh, you can't see it up there. I've got four patents. If you can, 
patent your products, design patent, utility patent. We're assuming in this case, you've designed your own product. So get a patent if it's possible. Copyright. If you're doing something that has a unique um, a, a, a graphic design to it, copyright the graphic design. Now, some clarity. It is copyrighted the moment you create it. And if you're having a graphic artist create it, make sure that they sign over all rights to you. That includes the copyright. But I want you to register the copyright. Patents, I said, make sure to patent it in the U.S. and China. Trademark. Trademark in the U.S. and in China. But interestingly, copyrights, if you register in the U.S., you're still protected in China because China is a signatory to the Berne Convention along with 100 plus others. Then record your trademark or your copyright with customs. Recorded with Chinese customs. So when something's leaving the port, if it says um, Stevens Ducks and it's not my duck, or at least it's not my name as a consignee, they will pull it aside. And they'll say, this says Stevens Ducks, it should be going to Steven. And it's not, they will pull it aside. And if maybe there's a red envelope, a bribe or something in China, and it gets out of the port in China, when it comes into the U.S., record it with U.S. Customs and Border Protection as well. Costs $190 for 10 years, $19 a year best $19 you'll ever spend. If they see that it says Stevens Ducks and it's not Steven as the consignee, once again, they will pull it, they will seize it. So that's really an expensive um, way of protecting yourself. That works for copyrights as well as trademarks. Does not work with patents. However, you should also register your trademark with Alibaba and register your patent with Alibaba. We said that a ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. What is the cure? Well, I'm not going to go into all the details, but number one, if you did register it with Alibaba, they are good. They do have a system. Put in a complaint with Alibaba. It's a lot easier if you register it first. You can also put in a complaint with Amazon. If you have the documentation, that makes things a lot easier. And of course, there is the legal system. There are laws against copying your product, against violating your patent, against trade dress. Look that one up. Um, that's if something, if if um, someone else comes out with a little duck that looks just like my little duck and a customer is going to look at it and look at the packaging and say, oh, that's Steven's duck. I'm going to buy it. And it's not Steven's duck. That's actually trade dress. So there's our ways in the legal system. People will say, oh, you have need hundreds of thousands of dollars. The patent's not worth it or anything else. Yeah, it costs a lot to defend a patent. I've defended my patent. I've defended patent uh, and my copyright. It cost me a lot, $21,000, but not hundreds of thousands of dollars. In fact, I'll tell you right now, the first thing that patent attorneys do is they look, they don't look at, oh, this looks like that. That's judgmental. They actually look at the filing. They look at the wrapper. They make sure that every T is crossed and every I is dotted because that's black and white. It's either done right or wrong. Um, so it doesn't always cost $100,000, but at least talk to your attorney and see how much that costs. So all in all, prevent first and prevent doing it the smart way. And going back to the original question, it's not Alibaba that's copying your product. It's bad actors bad suppliers, bad factories and so on that are selling what they've copied on the Alibaba platform. So in order to protect yourself, you got to know what's actually going on. Now that you know what's going on and now you know how to protect yourself. Uh, I know this was a quick list, just a, a very short video, but I wanted to give some perspective. And if you have questions, just reach out to me. Happy to help.